All right, so we're doing the upper wire bolt hole on the vertical stabilizer here. And I'm tossing Steve into the deep end here. You can see on the gusset, we marked which one was the bolt hole. We already centered the gusset to the, um, the spar and the leading edge with the rivet holes on the gusset. And then we marked that hole with a Sharpie and then had him drill through one side of the tube only. Okay. That's where the hole lines up. And that's where the hole lines up. So because this is a bolt hole going all the way through, you know, a rivet hole, it's not so big of a deal if we're not perfectly square um, to the tube because we're only, you know, pinching the tube plus the gusset. A bolt hole, we're going through a gusset, the tube wall, another tube wall, and um, another gusset in addition to the wire tabs that will eventually hold the wires on. So we want to, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to try for perfection. We need to drill that hole all the way through the tube nice and square. And because we have this set out on the table, um, <laughs> there's a point of diminishing returns, right? We're not going to take this over to, we're not going to disassemble it, take it over to the mill or the drill press and drill all the way through it. It's pointless. It's just a waste of time. Um, Again, this is a Jenny, not a rocket ship. So go ahead and take the gusset back off. Okay. Just moving this a little bit this way, these aren't perfectly centered, but it's close. And that's fine. The, the reason for that is we've got a three-quarter inch diameter tube here and a five-eighths diameter tube here. So it's always going to have an illusion of not being perfectly okay. square because it can't be. Okay. Um, and you can see our fancy shim here. It just happened that that gusset really perfected the shimming. So um, go ahead and take the drill stop off. Okay. okay. Now we've got a theory here that we work with when drilling and it's, let's just get that in there. Okay. If you're looking at the drill there and it's perfectly square and then you look at the drill from a 90 degree angle over here and it's perfectly square, then the drill must be perfectly square. So um, it's not quite square right now. We're going to have Steve square it up and then drill that hole all the way through. All the way through. Yeah. Mm. And when you're, I'm not going to say anything. This is all on you. No pressure. This looks square from my side here. How does it look from that side? It's here? square from this side. Okay. Maybe a smidge towards you on the mid. Yeah, you know, that's probably cool. And just don't go slow. Just let it rip. Perfect. So um, we're going to drop a drill bit through there. Go ahead and, and get that drill bit in there for me. Oh, okay. there it is. And we're gonna see how you did. So from this angle, holy smokes, that's about flawless. All right, let's see how it is from this angle. It looks like it might be, yeah. like it might be yeah, it might lean to the uh, north you know just what? a little bit there. We're splitting hairs for what, yeah. for what we're doing here. That's about flawless. So let's go ahead and call that done. And again, we'll open this up to 3 16ths later after we get the, the rest of the gusset drilled. So we'll click the gusset in place, drill the rest of those holes, and then we can move forward. Okay. So one thing I wanna make clear, and of course I'm yelling because it's raining now, we were only drilling all the way through on the bolt hole in yeah. that last example. Now you're only drilling through the wall of one side of the tube because these are rivets. So if it's a rivet, you don't drill all the way through because you have to use the gusset to create that perfect pattern. So. When this is done, we'll flip it over, Clico the other gusset, the other side, onto your bolt hole there, and okay. then we'll use the gusset itself, just like you're doing now, as the pattern for placing the rivets. Okay. So I'll go ahead and drill that rivet. Okay. Rivet hole, I should say. Clico okay. ready? Perfect. We're about to pull this assembly off of the table now, but before we do that, we want to rough mark our cut lines for where the leading edge meets the trailing edge. And then also down here where the leading edge meets that rib. So we've marked those. We're going to cut those now on the bandsaw after we disassemble this, but um, we're going to cut them a little large and then we're going to rivet this assembly together. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to come back in and trim those down with a roll lock after assembly because we can actually fine tune it to trim them to an exact dimension. E exactly, okay. yeah. So exactly what the eyeball sees and, and likes is what we'll trim it to. So now, go ahead and moment of truth, Mr. Steve. Okay. And lift the entire assembly. Yeah, and just take the whole thing off the table. 
There it is. There it is. <laughs> How long did that take? Not more than a few hours, no, right? No, I mean, we're, I mean, not even, we're not even at lunchtime yet. We're getting close to lunch, but... Yeah. So what we'll do now, we're going to disassemble this whole thing. You can see, go ahead and set this back down real quick. You can see that we've um, numbered the gussets. So there's five, there's four. We've numbered the table as well. Um, what we're going to do now... This one is number six. Number okay. six, yep. So what we'll do is take all these gussets off. We'll prime the side that gets mated to the ribs. So we're not going to prime over the numbers. We're going to prime the opposite side. We'll prime the tubes, and then we'll clico everything back here like it is. We'll make sure we don't have any crazy burrs in between the gussets. We don't want burrs on the gusset, um, in between the gusset and the, and the, and the, and the, the tube. Tube, okay. Yeah, so on the inside of the tube, sometimes you'll see the little hook. Do you, can you grab the little hook debraying tool? Yes, I will get it. Give me just a it's, second. The hook one is actually put away in the oh. bin. So here you'll see the little hook deburring tool. You can get inside a tube with this thing. And of course this spins. And you could deburr the inside of the tube, all right? But we're not gonna worry about that because right now we've got this set at a number 40. And we're gonna come back in, and in our experience, if we use a really sharp number 30 when we open up these holes, mm -hmm. it won't create a burr, all okay. right? So what we'll be able to do is just go ahead and drill it, put a rivet in, and drill it. It's slightly larger, so it just kind of cleans out the it cleans existing it out. hole. Okay. Yeah. So where burrs are most likely to form are um, in between pieces. If it's a loose fit, they don't really appear there too often if it's a tight fit when you drill it. Um, and of course, on the back side of the tube, if you're punching a hole with a, a dull uh, bit, drill bit. drill bit, but when the hole is already there, the pilot hole, and you're using a really super sharp bit. And for the record, that's how we do our Ryan replicas. When we skin our Ryan replicas here as quick builds, what we do is we burn through drill bits like you wouldn't believe because it takes care of that. Okay. Uh, the chips and burrs in a much quicker fashion than actually going back in and handy burring everything. Okay. So, yeah, so what we'll do, go ahead and disassemble this. We'll prime everything. We'll re it back together, and then we can do the fun part, and that's to start uh, riveting. And then after one side's riveted, we'll go back to the other side, okay. um, do exactly the same thing. We'll make sure all our tubes are still shimmed off of the table. Uh, appropriately, but we won't need the blocks anymore because um, everything's in place. Already. Everything's in place. Yeah. yeah. So, wow, let's do that. All right, Mr. Steve, we're getting ready to flip this over so we can drill. You can see the other side hasn't been drilled yet right. and, and gusseted. Um, we also have not yet drilled this side of the hinges to spar okay? okay and we need to do that squarely because um because a bolt goes it's through. a bolt yeah okay. so this side is clicoed in place okay and this side is as well so now what we'll do is just flip it over drill it from the other side because you've already drilled the steel okay you can see there the steel has been drilled already yep and then once that's done we can actually take out these clicos which will allow this to sit flat against the table to where we can um you know, shim it appropriately okay. and uh, start drilling for the gusses we'll on this side. On yeah. After doing that? Yes. Yeah, we'll leave the hinges in place. But we're not riveting the hinges. We're just clicoing them on? We're just uh, clicoing, yes. Okay. We're not. Yeah, this one has to come back off because this, this is the one I have to finish welding. But okay. um, So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so what we've done is we've shimmed this. Uh, you know, the other side's already riveted. Rudder. Yeah, the other side of the rudder is already riveted. We've flipped it over and put our shims back in place. Okay. Now we got some 16th inch shims there. Yep. Yeah. And then this thing still flexes because both sides aren't riveted yet, right? But we need to have it flat to the table so we can actually get our accuracy in drilling. So we've got these plates here, really forcing everything down to the table. So um, we've got a few areas here where the shim isn't quite touching, but the gap is, I mean, it's absolutely minor. So what our biggest concern is, is the relationship of the trailing edge to that spar, right? So, um, cause that's where the warpage is going to come from. So if the ribs are a little bit high, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything as long as we're not like into the 16th inch range. That's when things start to get funky. Okay. And even then 
you know, when you're drilling this gusset, we could drill it to the trailing edge. And then if you wanted to really force this down while you're drilling this side. We could even see it move just a little yeah, bit. And you yeah, yeah, exactly. And once you get everything riveted, it's going to find its natural center. It has no choice. It's going to, um, yeah. you know, it's all the same stiffnesses. Kind of, yeah. yeah, it'll it'll find its balance point. So, um, so yeah, now it's time to just go ahead and do exactly what you did to the other side. And uh, when you're done drilling it to the to the first size, pull everything back apart. We'll deburr the edges, and um, or not deburr the edges because I've already I've already deburred the tubes. But we'll clean off where the primer is going to go, and then we'll have so you, you mean cleco it together and then pull it pull all the clecos back out, okay. prime the mating surfaces, and then rivet it just like you did the other side, and then it'll be done. Mm -hmm.